Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. I just got back from a trip. I visited bookstores in Detroit, Boston, Syracuse, St. Catharines, Ontario, and Toronto. There are some great bookstores and so many books. I'm going to break this apart into two book halls. This first one I'm going to call the old, and the second one will be the new. In the new, we will look at a bookstore I visited in Toronto and also books that I received in the mail while I was gone. So let's get started. My wife and I flew into Toronto and rented a car. We went to the Essex and Windsor area of Ontario to visit some friends. While there, I decided I wanted to go across the bridge to Detroit to visit a legendary bookstore, the John K. King Used and Rare Books Bookstore. It is housed in an old four-story warehouse, and behind it, there is another warehouse where the rare books are kept. On the third floor of the main warehouse, you'll find the science fiction section. Rows upon rows of paperbacks, and three large rows of hardcovers. This was SF Heaven. After finding five hardcovers and five paperbacks that I wanted to purchase, I asked if we could go to the rare SF room. We had to wait for an employee to guide us into the rare books section in the next building. I felt like Indiana Jones going into a deep, dark warehouse of wonders. Near the door of the science fiction room was a meteorite that was for sale. For $12,500, you could have a meteorite from Argentina. Or, for just $850, you could have the first printing of a canticle for Leibowitz. There were so many treasures in this room. Like the Twilight Zone? How about Richard Matheson's The Twilight Zone Scripts? A signed edition that was limited to 500 numbered copies. John K. King's Used and Rare Books is the best bookstore I've ever been in. If you're ever in the Detroit area, you need to visit. Let's take a look at some of the books I picked up. And I tell you, it was hard to limit these books because I knew I was flying back to Winnipeg and there was only so much room in my luggage. As it was, I actually shipped a box to Winnipeg as well. Let's start with the hardcover books that I picked up. If you've been following the channel, you know that I've been collecting hardcovers from the Nesfa Press. That's the New England Science Fiction Association. They often print hardcover books of collections of stories or omnibuses of novels. They do this in connection often with science fiction conventions. So I've picked up two Nesfa books. The first one is by Robert Sheckley. The Mask of Manana. I hope I said that right. The Mask of Manana contains 41 pieces of selected short fiction by Robert Sheckley, including the 1953 Retro Hugo Award nominee, Seventh Victim. The 1966 Nebula Award nominee, Shall We Have a Little Talk? And the 1977 World Fantasy Award nominee, What is Life? This volume is produced for Robert Checkley's Guest of Honorship at Interaction, the 2005 World Science Fiction Convention in Glasgow, Scotland. And the cover art is by Bob Eggleton. There you go. This book was only $8.50 American. And here's a look at the contents. So a very good deal, I think you would agree. And I found one more Nesfa book there from the Nesfa Press. This one is called First Contacts, The Essential Murray Leinster. Once again, this one was $8.50. First Contacts contains 24 stories covering the full spectrum of Leinster's career. Included are such classic early works as Proxima Centauri, 
first contact, and one of the earliest alternate timeline stories, Sidewise in Time. Included are Keyhole, De Profundis, and a story written in 1945 that anticipated the internet, a logic called Joe. The Hugo Award-winning exploration team was the inspiration for our full-color cover art by Hannibal King. Also here for the first time are The Great Catastrophe, his lost pulp epic, and the inspiring To All Fat Policemen. There is a four-page introduction by renowned author Hal Clement. So this book was printed in 1998, and here's a look at the contents. This cover art is by Hannibal King. Sort of has a comic book feel to it. And the back is even better. Now, on to a brand new series that I'm starting to collect. I've seen these books before, but haven't pulled the trigger on them. But there was three of these books in John K. King, and the time just seemed right to start picking these up. I'll do them in order of publication. So this is volume one of the classics of modern science fiction from Crown SF Classics. Men, Martians, and Machines by Eric Frank Russell. Just recently, I reviewed Wasp by Eric Frank Russell. You can find that review on the channel. This book has a foreword by Isaac Asimov and an introduction by George Sabrowski. This first crown edition is from 1984, and the novel itself is copyright 1955. The cover art for the entire series is done by Michael Booth. So this is volume one. And on the spine, you can see at the bottom there, the logo for Crown SF Classics. I will speak more about these books when I talk about the series as a whole. Volume 7 is The Paradox Men by Charles Harness. There's an introduction by George Sabrowski again, a foreword by Isaac Asimov. That foreword is actually the same through all the novels. And an afterword by Brian Aldiss. By the way, these books were all priced just under $10. This novel by Charles Harness was published first in 1949 in a shorter version in the issue of Startling Stories under the title Flight into Yesterday, and an expanded hardcover version appeared in 1953. In 1955, Donald A. Wolheim retitled the story The Paradox Men for a new Ace paperback. It's been unavailable to American readers for nearly three decades, Extensively revised by the author, this is now the definitive edition of a genuine science fiction classic. So this crown edition is copyright 1984. The Paradox Men. And the last classics of modern science fiction, in fact, the last book in the series, there's 10. Number 10 is Greener Than You Think by Ward Moore. This novel is actually the inspiration for John Christopher's classic novel, The Death of Grass. It's a bit thicker than the other ones. This edition was printed in 1985. So all the books from this series are from 1984 to 1985. The original copyright is 1947. So that's five hardcover books that I got from John K. King. 
but I also picked up five paperbacks. Let's take a look at them. The first one we're going to take a look at is part of a series of books I've been picking up from Bain Books. In the early 2000s, Eric Flint and Bain Books started to put together James H. Smith stories. So I picked up earlier Telsey Amberden, Trigger and Friends, and TNT with Telsey Amberden and Trigger Argy together. The universe that James Smith has created for almost all his stories is called The Hub. And so now I picked up The Hub, Dangerous Territory, once again edited by Eric Flint and part of the Bain Books line. This is a first printing from April 2001. So as you can see now, it fits quite well as a series. I also found another book by James H. Smith, which I've never seen before. It's five superb science fiction stories, a pride of monsters. And I really like that cover. Humans face fear and the unknown in five terrifying tales of the future. This is from Collier Books. Copyright 1970. And in the contents, we have Lion Loose, The Searcher, The Winds of Time, The Pork Chop Tree, and Green Face. One author that I'm trying to read all of his works is Bob Shaw. I picked up two of his books that I didn't have. There are books from the 1980s, from 1986, the Ragged Astronauts. And its sequel from 1988, The Wooden Spaceships. Another author that I discovered actually reading the A Science Fiction Special Series 1 was Alexi Panshin. Earlier, I picked up a series, an Anthony Villiers adventure. There was Starwell, and there was the Third Revolution. And I found the third book at John K. King, Mask World. So now I have this trilogy of books about Anthony Villiers, and it co-stars Torv the Trog. This is an ace book, copyright 1969. So I have a little card that I'm going to use as a bookmark from John K. King. Once again, highly Highly recommended. From Detroit, we headed over to Boston, where I visited with my niece. We went together to downtown Boston area and wandered around the city. One of the places that I like to visit when I visit a big city is its public library, its flagship library. And this one didn't disappoint. It just so happened that the day that we were visiting the Boston Public Library, they were having a book sale. And I just happened to find a Nesva book that had been donated to the library by Nesva themselves. Judith Merrill, C.M. Kornbluth, spaced out three novels of tomorrow. So this is an omnibus. And once again, you can see it's Nesva. And I believe this is basically a brand new book. It does have a remainder mark on it. And inside you can see that it says it's a gift from Nesfa. If you enjoy this book, visit us at www.nesfa.org. So the novels that we have in here are Gunner Cade, first published in Astounding Science Fiction in 1952, Outpost Mars, 
first published in Galaxy Science Fiction in 1952, and Shadow on the Hearth by Judith Merrill alone, and this was first published by Doubleday and Company in 1950. The Dust Jacket Art is by William K. Hartman. This is a brand new book. I don't think it's been read by anyone. And it's a first edition from October of 2008. I was thrilled to find this book in the Boston Public Library sale. And then we enjoyed the architecture of the library itself. Libraries are a great place to visit in many of the major cities in the world. Before we headed home, we stopped at a used bookstore called Brattle Bookshop. This was a very unique bookstore. It had an outdoor selling area. It was populated mostly with more contemporary books, books about history, music, culture, and some thrillers and mysteries. Inside, I did find a shelf of science fiction. And on that shelf, I found two books that I wanted to collect. And once again, they were crown classic science fiction books. This time I picked up Unearthly Neighbors by Chad Oliver. It's volume eight. This was first published as a paperback original in 1960, and it now appeared in hardcover for the first time. The author has substantially revised portions of the text, making this the definitive edition of his story. This is Chad Oliver's fourth novel telling the story of anthropologist Monty Stewart, who leads an expedition of fellow scientists to the ninth planet of the Sirius system, where Earthmen have made their first contact with extraterrestrial intelligent life. And book number nine is also by Chad Oliver, Shadows in the Sun. For anthropologist Paul Ellery, Jefferson Springs seemed to be a perfectly typical community to study. It was an ordinary small Texas town, population 6,000, surrounded by farms and ranches and desert brush. A railroad track down the center of a sleepy main street, there was the proverbial double feature movie house, a drugstore, a grocery, a church, a gas station, and a weekly newspaper filled with livestock prices and local gossip. It was quintessentially American. Why, then, was Paul Ellery so terribly afraid? Perhaps it was because everything seemed too authentic. I like that introduction. So I now have five of the classics of modern science fiction. Let's take a look at them side by side. Here's what they would look like on the bookshelf. I think I'm going to look for the other five. From Boston, we started to make our way back to Toronto, where I have a nephew. Along the way, we stopped at a bookstore that I found online in Syracuse. As you know, I've been collecting SF Masterworks and also Golden Age Masterworks from Golangs. Well, there's a lot of novels by E.E. E. Doc Smith in the Golden Age Masterworks, but I don't have to buy any of them anymore. Here's why. I found three science fiction book club omnibus editions of E.E. E. Doc Smith. The first one is Chronicles of the Lensmen, Volume 1. This book collects the first half of the first and one of the most famous space epics of all time. With these books, Doc Smith laid the foundation for all science fiction to come. I picked this up for $5 American. Actually, the other two books as well are for $5. So volume one has three books in the omnibus. Triplanetary, First Lensman, and Galactic Patrol. The science fiction book club printing is from June of 1998. And, of course, the next one is Chronicles of the Lensman, Volume 2.
Volume 2 contains Grey Lensman, Second Stage Lensman, and Children of the Lens. One of the cool things I found in the back of this book, though, however, was a poster. And there's a poster of the cover art. Now, I didn't have a copy like this for the first book, but this one was contained in the second book. I think you're going to see that on the board there behind me. And the cover art for both Volume 1 and Volume 2 is by John Berkey. The third one, The Complete Skylark. This omnibus contains The Skylark of Space, Skylark 3, Skylark of Valeron, and Skylark Duquesne. And the cover art for this one is by Vincent de Fate. Very similar to John Berkey. So $15 American for all these E.E. E. Doc Smith books. I think that was a great haul. But it's not over yet. I may be saving the best for last. I found a unique used bookstore in St. Catharines, Ontario, near Niagara Falls. The Wright Bookshop is enormous. The thing that sets it apart from other bookstores I've gone to is that they store their books horizontally. Surprisingly, it actually made the book spines easier to read. The problem was, the books were stacked too deep. So I felt like I was playing Jenga, moving piles to look and see what was behind them. There was a general attempt to stack things alphabetically by author. It still was rather chaotic. But this is the store where I made another big find. So what books did I find? Well, recently I was at a book launch with Robert J. Sawyer for his latest book, The Downloaded. And one of his books is a Best Novel Nebula Award winner. It's called The Terminal Experiment. I read this a long time ago, but I gave away that book or else it was a library book that I read. So I want to return and take a look at this book again someday. Virtually a brand new edition, but there's definitely some browning on the sides here. Copyright for this one is from May of 1995. I picked up the collection of stories by James Tiptree Jr., a.k.a. Alice Sheldon, called 10,000 Light Years from Home. And it's got an introduction by Harry Harrison. This is in a pan science fiction edition that Stephen, the outlaw bookseller, likes to call the Lausange editions. That's because the author's name is in a Lausange-shaped square, rounded corners. This book was copyright 1975, and this edition here is from 1977. Whenever I'm looking in used bookstores, I always keep my eye out for the name Thomas M. Dish. This time, he edited an anthology. So an anthology has different authors contributing short stories. This is called The Ruins of Earth. And you can see here J.G. Ballard, Philip K. Dick, Harry Harrison, R.A. Lafferty, Fritz Leiber, and Kurt Vonnegut Jr. Already a killer lineup. The copyright for this collection is 1973. And here are the stories that you'll find within. Here's the last one. This one was almost as big a surprise to me as when I first found Neuromancer in a bookstore. Priced at $3.50 Canadian, I found Star of the Unborn by Franz Werfel. This is a book that Matt from Book Pill has promoted heavily. 
It's one of his favorite works of science fiction. And it's a very rare book. There have only been two printings, a hardback in 1946 and this paperback from 1976. Because of Matt's promotion and other science fiction reviewers renewing interest in this book, it's becoming more and more difficult to find. If you look on places like eBay or ABE Books, you'll see that prices are often in the triple digits. My cost? $3.50. I've already started to give it a bit of a read. It's a very interesting book. Not your typical science fiction from 1946. And Franz Werfel himself is a very interesting person. But I'll get into that in the future when I review this book. So there you go. You have the old of my book haul from my recent trip. Be sure to subscribe or stay tuned for my next episode where I'll take a look at the new from the trip. Mostly books from Toronto and also books that were mailed to me while I was gone. Until next time, keep looking for bookstores and keep collecting vintage SF.